Okay, so after overclocking my Pi 400 to 2300 and getting pretty decent results on it, it was certainly improving the speed, it was nice and stable, I figured I'd see how much higher I could go. So already yesterday I overclocked to 2400, not expecting it to work, but uh, had really good results on it. So if we have a look at NeoFetch, you can see here that it's overclocked to 2400. And uh, if I go into config.txt, you can see how I've done it. So I got rid of the bottom line because I think on the higher overclocks, this arm boost equals one doesn't seem to work uh, in automatically adjusting the voltage. But if I go up to my settings, these are the four things I've added. Current limit override equals one, force turbo equals one, over underscore voltage equals 12. I was on over underscore voltage equals 11 before on 2300 and it was very stable. And uh, you can see arm frequency equals 2400. Just to show that it's stable and it's working, uh, if I start up the web browser, it really does feel snappy as well. I'm, I'm really impressed with how well it works. So if I do YouTube Lee PSP video HDR and do a search for that, call that out. I'll just leave all this in real time just so you can show, uh, just so I can show how well it runs. There we go, so video is playing. Let's go full screen. And we can have a look at the, oh, you can't see the temperature when YouTube is full screen. All right, we'll have a look in a minute. Uh, so this should be 1080. Yeah, it's running in 1080. It's not quite got there yet, as you can see. But if we put on stats for nerds, uh, we'll block YouTube notifications. And we'll leave it for a second because it needs a bit of time to settle down before it's stable. Yeah, that looks all right. So it's not going up now and it's nice and smooth. So if we escape out of that and we can see that the temperature is only 41 degrees, 42 degrees. But if we hover over this, we can see it's at 2400. So yeah, working well really. So if we do a bit more searching, BBC Sport, and uh, call up that page and just sort of scroll through it just to show that it's working all right and it's not freezing. Get a few more tabs. Uh, so my usual Hot UK deals. Click on that. And you can see that, yeah, it's it's working really well. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I wasn't expecting it to be stable and also wasn't expecting it to be uh, good at this sort of temperature. I think what I'll do is I'll leave YouTube running for 10 minutes while I've got to list something on eBay and uh, let's see what happens. So let's go to my channel and uh, I've got a long FIFA video which I can just leave running for a little bit and then I'll check the temperature when I come back just so it's under normal use. Uh, so videos and if we put in FIFA here and which one is it? Some of these are really old. Yeah, playing old FIFA online. There you go, that'll do. And I can leave that playing at 1080 full screen. So yeah, 720 at the moment, 1080 and full screen. And come back after a while and see what it's doing for temperature. Okay, so I'm not sure how long that's been running, but uh, you can see that it's still pretty cool at 47 to 50 degrees, and it's already cooling down now, it's not playing a video. Uh, so really good performance. If you haven't seen inside a Pi 400, there is a, a large aluminium heatsink on top of the processor, but underneath the keyboard, so there's no moving parts. It is, it is very, very good for overclocking. So uh, let's run NeoFetch just to see how long this has been going for. So Control alt t so it's been up and running for 31 minutes. I haven't had any issues. I've been using the web browser. I was using it yesterday as well. I also did a Strasberry test yesterday. Uh, so if I click on this one, this is the results I had from the previous video. And uh, at 2400, uh, so the idle temperature was lower, but uh, it was a different time of the day, so it's hard to judge on that. Uh, but it got up to 64.2. So the same temperature it got up to as the 2300. You'd expect it to be higher, and it was probably because maybe it was a bit cooler in the room at the later time of day that I was doing it. But yeah, good results. So I need to do the handbrake test as well uh, and see if we can get a better time than 1 minute and 2.26, which is the best time we had, uh, which was at 2300 with an over voltage of 11. So let's run that handbrake test. So let's start it up, sound and video, and then we can open the source. So it's this test video and use the same settings as I used before, which was general and fast 720. And let's start. 
Again, it's going up nice and fast. Be very surprising if it does it in the recommended 29, 30 seconds. Although it does, it is going fast. And you see the temperature's up to 60, 61 degrees. So nothing at all to worry about. Okay, and that's done. I take it when it uh, changes the screen, so the screen flicks, that's when I do the end of the test. Uh, so what I'll do is edit it now so I can find out how long that took. And you can see the temperature goes down very quickly. Okay, so I've edited the video, uh, and if I go to the chart, I can see how well it did, and it's definitely faster. Uh, so it was 1 minute 0.58. So it's, uh, yeah, it's still getting faster. I need to move this over here because it's a bit neater. Let's put that the other side. And uh, so that was with an over voltage of 12. So yeah, it's stable. It's not that hot and it's getting faster. Let's go higher. I think what I'll do is play around with it and see as far as I can push it and see where it's stable and come back and do a few tests. So little update, uh, 2500 I went straight up to and it didn't work at 13, 14 or 15 over voltage. But 2425 has booted with over voltage of 13. Uh, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm gonna try and notch it up a bit higher and see how far it'll let me go. You can see NeoFetch calls it 2.5, and also the reader down the bottom here says it's 2.5, but it is overclocked to 2425 currently. Uh, and if I go into my config.txt, I can show you. There is 13 and 2425. So I'm gonna keep going up. 2450 didn't boot at uh, I think 13. I'm gonna have to when I log back in, I'll know. Um, so I upped the over voltage and it booted to the desktop, but then it froze. So I thought I'd call in the big guns. So I had uh, with this mini router, uh, which unfortunately has a compute module for that doesn't work anymore because I, I wrecked it in a video. Uh, I had this power adapter, and uh, this is a 4 amp, so it's 5 volt, 4 amp, 20 watt. Whereas the standard Raspberry Pi one is pretty decent and works really well, 5.1 volt at three amps. So this should possibly give me a little bit more power. It might not be the problem. The problem is probably that I'm taking a machine which is designed for 1800 and I'm already gone over 2.4, but let's give it a try with this power adapter. So I plugged it in, let's switch it on and see what happens. So we've got lights, displays come on. So it's all right so far. Okay, I have a desktop, which I did get before with the official Raspberry Pi adapter, but let's try moving the mouse. No, I've got no mouse. Okay, so that isn't the problem. Uh, so I'll move back to the other adapter. Okay, so 2430 with an over voltage of 14 seems to be stable, but this is on a knife edge. If I go a little bit up, it can't handle it and it either boots uh, and then crashes straight away or it doesn't boot at all. But yeah, so far, so good on 2430 with an over voltage of 14. Okay, so I think this is the stable overclock. Defender I've got to check what first. it is because I can't remember what it is, but it's been playing for quite some time now. Uh, I don't think I started at the start of this video, so let's have a look at the other I basically player. started it up and it uh, started the video playing. So this has been running for 46 minutes and it's, and it's been fine. So uh, I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to do the test with. Uh, so let's get Stressberry up and let's have a look at the terminal and we can see what we're running at. So config.txt comes up as 2410 with an over voltage of 12. So that seems to be my stable one, yeah. So this is working, I'll put on there. So all the others, uh, so 2415 crashes two to five minutes. Uh, I had 2425, 2430, so I've gone through loads of different ones, but I would say 2410 uh, seems to be about right. Uh, that's probably about as far as I can push it and keep it stable. So uh, I guess let's do a stress berry test. The temperature still, I'm just impressed that it, it doesn't really seem to heat up that much considering it is constantly running at 2500. Uh, it's been running YouTube and it's nice and cool. So uh, yeah, let's close that down and let's do a stress berry test, which will be a bit further back here somewhere. There it is. So let's run the stress berry test first and hopefully it runs all the way through it. And it doesn't because it's crashed. Uh, so it really, it was 2400 was the best one for me. 2400 with an over voltage of 12 
uh, we had uh, Strasberry went all the way through. It only got 64.2, so not particularly hot at all. And uh, on the handbrake test, it was the best we had. So one minute and uh, 58 hundredths of a second. So uh, yeah, 2400 for me seems to be the best I can run the Pi 400. I'm just gonna play around with it and leave it at that temperature and uh, just see how it gets on. And I'll leave a comment on the video. If I get crashes at 2400, uh, then uh, maybe I'll have to try a lower clock frequency. But it has worked for me and it has done the handbrake test and the stress berry test. So I think it might be all right. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.